Hello everyone and in this video tutorial we will be talking about motor proteins you know motor proteins are uh, you know brothers of uh, cytoskeleton and why I am calling them brothers of cytoskeleton because uh, motor proteins and cytoskeleton especially microtubules have a great task to accomplish inside the cell and that is uh, movement of cargo and also movement of organelles inside the cell, movement of vesicles filled with materials to be delivered from one place to another place, right? Now, just think about an easy simple concept. That is, you have a cargo and you need to deliver it to some location, right? So obviously, you need a vesicle, you know, obviously you need a vehicle to transport that, right? That is a very, very important stage. You need a uh, to walk through a path or you need to take a cab or bicycle or whatever you need to move that cargo to the destination and that thing is in this case of cellular cargo movement or trafficking process we need uh, this this road or whatever road in this case is acting as you know microtubules microtubules so let me sorry let me change the color actually microtubules acting as here the road right and in this case motor proteins motor proteins are acting like like the vehicle which delivers the cargo which is filled with cargo and walk through the road that means motor proteins will walk through microtubule to deliver the cargo to the destination and that's what exactly happened inside the cell. So if I draw the structure of a microtubule here, say this is the structure of a microtubule, it's pre pretty linear structure in this case, and it's kind of tube, a cylindrical structure like that. And let me draw the motor proteins. So motor proteins are having a typical structure. So let's say, let me draw this structure here first. Okay, it have two head and two tail region and it ultimately holds on to the vehicle. So let's say in this case, this is the vehicle and let's say the vehicle is filled with certain materials which is to be delivered and now let's say this is a plus end, this is minus end of the microtubule. So, this is the microtubule and this is the motor protein, okay. So, in this case, this motor protein will walk, will actually walk, that's why I am telling this term walk because they actually walk uh, through this microtubule from one place to another place walking through the microtubule which is acting here as road right so this is road and microtubule is motor protein here is vehicle so this is the very basic idea of motor proteins right now, if i look at the detailed structure of uh, this motor proteins it will look something like this let's say so let me check so let's take a different color for that let's take this orange color yeah so it will look something like this it has a particular it has a particular tail structure like this and it has coil domains like this and ultimately it has the head look something like this so you can see this is kind of the structure of a motor protein uh, i mean it has this head domain and also it has a tail domain and the fact is uh, they walk using their head not using their tail so tail part remains up head part remains in the bottom and the, and the intermediate region is termed as the stalk the stalk okay so this is the structure now hold on to these vehicles or whatever things you need to give them onto the top of the tail region. So this is the this is say this is a protein filled cargo. So let me write it as cargo only. So this is the cargo 
filled with proteins destined to be delivered to somewhere inside the cell and it is loaded onto the tail of these motor proteins. Once it is loaded, the motor protein will work on the microtubule, right? Now, which direction it will work? That's the question. Which direction? You know, the direction is dependent because, you know, microtubule is having two parts. One is positive end, another one is a negative end. There is a plus end, minus end, nothing about charge. Remind you, there is nothing about charge in this case. It's simply about the assembly and disassembly of microtubule subunits that are tubulin. Now, plus end and minus end, right? Some of the motor proteins can work towards plus end. Some of the motor proteins work towards minus end, right? They prefer. So, there are varieties of motor proteins that are present. Now, inside the cell, I am going to tell you two types of motor proteins mainly. One is kinesin. Kinesin. Another one is dienin. Dienin. Kinesin and dienin. Now, among this thing, if I draw again uh, the structure, I don't think it's required to draw, but actually, kinesin works towards, so remember, if they work towards positive end, dynein work towards negative or minus end. Threat has been right? detected. Kinesin work towards plus end, dynein work towards minus end. That is kind of fixed thing in all this case. Both of them can carry cargo molecules, they are attached with organelles, you know, sometimes instead of cargo, mitochondria for example is attached. This thing may result because you know organelles also need to be moved from one place to another place, right? So, so that thing remains all the time, okay. So this is, this, are, this is how motor proteins actually work. Now how motor protein actually works? Because you know I've told you they kind of walk. Walk means actually they have kind of head. So the, the, the process of movement of this motor protein is forwarding one head crossing another one because you know they are crossed like this spiral so they further cross it cross one of part of the head to other other side that's called the first power stroke then in the second time that second part is crossed over it so it's called the second power stroke so this is how they actually move i'm not going to tell how they move in this particular video there are different videos about the motor protein movement so if you want to know that you can go back and see those videos and uh, but actually they require obviously they require energy for the movement and the energy is you know provided by adenosine triphosphate or ATP right. So there are ATP binding domains present in their head side right. So ATP suppose ATP is bound right. So once once the ATP is hydrolyzed in a particular place that part of the section so so once the ATP is attached to one region of the head because ATP can attach. So once the ATP is attached to, to one part of the head, that part will be sticked to the microtubule, right? And once the ATP is hydrolyzed, that section of the head part will come up from the microtubule. And then they cross it, rotate it, and then the process will continue. So this is a process, right? Okay. But that's how they move. They require ATP for their movement. And the walk is very easy. It's, it's kind of illustrable with your, you know, with, with the hand. I am recording this via this black uh, model. That's why I'm not uh, be able to show you how exactly it's occurring. But that's how it's done. And that's the motor protein, guys. But motor proteins are important, not only cargo movement and cellular organelle movement, but also they are required uh, during the cell cell division, you know, during the chromosome segregation, right? So this is kind of common in all this case. So that's it guys and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.